In this video, we got all the interior of the former cargo hold of our ship, which took us over a year. So these are the before shots. And that's what we achieved. But let's start at the beginning. So two years ago, we bought this absolutely massive steel ship. And if you don't believe how big it is, I absolutely don't blame you. It took us a whole year to realize the true size. So why have we bought such a huge ship then? We want to convert her into a traditional sailing ship and sail with young people all around the world. But until we can finally sail into the sunset, there will be a lot of work, sweat and tears. It's horrible. Now it's getting really, really painful. But first things first, we just moved the board Flying Coney. Well, who are we? We are Daniel and Barbara. And before we had the stupid idea to buy an old historic restoration project, we were professional sail racers. But eventually we decided it was time for a new adventure and now we are in the middle of a huge refit project. So we just moved aboard when we found out that our bilge was full of, well, whatever that is. At that moment it didn't bother us too much. Because the ship was for sale for two years, no one took care of the boat during that time and the water level wasn't rising. So we just emptied out the bilge, brought the water to the pump out station and hoped for the best. Oh no, not again. So we emptied out the bilge again. This time we used the bilge pump, a big barrel and the dinghy. And the next step was to find out where the water was coming from. Flying Cone is a riveted ship and there are problems related to this construction method. First and most forward, it's possible that a rivet or a blade seam starts leaking. And even so, the hull is plenty strong. 7.2 Hull. Oh, that's great. 7.6 7.1 8.1 There was a lot of rust at the waterline and it's not unheard of that small leakages develop over time. So we started lifting the cabin sail. And it seemed like the water was coming from starboard. We think the water is coming from the guest cabin, so we really need to have a look at the high there. And that's when we started to rip the interior out. Also, we found a lot of rust under the insulation, the hull was bone dry. So we investigated further and found out that the water was coming from the forecastle. After a little bit more investigation and destruction, we saw this. We can see that there is a big puddle of water underneath of the water tank. So there are now two possibilities. Either the uh, water is coming from the water tank or it's coming from the hull behind the water tank. So just to be sure, we ripped out the second cabin as well. Just to find out that the hull there also was completely dry. So the next step was to open up the water tank. There were some bubbles uh, in the coating and we assume it's rust. So we do whatever the same people would do. We poke it with a stick. So after poking and emptying out the water tank, it was clear the water tank was the reason for all that water in the bilge. But even so we found no leak in the hull, we still found a lot of rust. So we took all the water in the bilge as a warning sign and made an appointment in the shipyard to haul out Flying County as soon as possible. So we went on a journey from Lelystad to Urk to bring Flying County to the shipyard. Hey, Captain. So we made it to Urk. But the problem with this particular shipyard is that it is at the end of a very narrow channel. However, we played it cool. And 
safely arrived at the shipyard. And after helpful tips from the shipyard... Come here between the boats, the great boats. You can make the boat run uh, over this way. Um, I have no boat. Yeah, and several attempts, we finally hauled out Flying Kelly. Remember when I said it took us some time to realize how big this ship is? Well, that was the moment. The next step was to pressure wash Flying Coney. That's when we discovered this huge corrosion damage. To be precise, an electrolysis damage. So what does electrolysis mean? Basically, it means we have small pittings all over the hull. Like here, and here, and here, and over there, and up here. And then there's another one here, and here, and there, and over there, and here. So basically everywhere. So what caused the corrosion damage? Well, such a big damage is always caused by some sort of electric current. And we believe that there are two reasons for it. First, there was something wrong with the electric system. And second, we also found that some of the protective anodes were completely eaten up, while others haven't worked at all. So it's one of those situations where a few things add up to a catastrophic result, and in our case that meant we had a lot of work ahead of us. But before you jump to conclusions, there is a reason why we haven't hauled out Flying Coney pre-purchase. Actually, she was lifted and inspected recently before we bought her. So we had a hull sickness and safety report and a lot of good looking photos. And this immense damage in such a short time is very unusual and was a nasty surprise. To repair the damage, the lads from the shipyard had to fill up each and every pitting with weld. So Case and Lucas started welding in the area of the engine room. Because in all other compartments there was interior and insulation right next to the hull. And we didn't want Flying Coney to go up in smoke. So it was our turn to rip everything out that was directly on the hull. Interior, insulation, you name it. It's all framed! So we were in a race with the welders from the shipyard. We ripped out, they welded, we ripped out, they welded. So we started off by removing the galley, at least the stuff that was next to the hull. And after some throwing action we continued on the port side, by gutting the saloon area and that wardrobe-like thing. All the interior on the port side is removed now, it was a lot easier than on the starboard side, but now comes the part we are really not looking forward to, removing all the insulation. Okay, insulation. Let me explain. Flying Coney used to be a North Sea fishing crawler and fished from 1950 to 1977. So the area of the galley and the saloon was the freezer room back then. So it was well insulated with thick and heavy cork tiles. Unfortunately, when she was transferred into a sailing ship back in 77, they left the cork tiles in place to save a few bucks. However, over the years the coating underneath it failed and the moisture of the cork tiles caused a lot of rust on the hull and destroyed many frames completely. I do think we have a steel problem, not a rust problem, because we have plenty of rust. Oh, that's all framed. I know. Luckily, the wood is still in place. The wood is in better condition than the steel. Yeah. I think that's not how it should be. Okay. Makes it easier to remove. The insulation. And that was the point when we called in a surveyor to check if it's possible to save this historic boat. After a lot of considerations, we decided it is worth to continue. However, it added a huge to-do list to our restoration project. And we realized that we literally saved Flying Coney last minute. Since behind the insulation there was so much rust, 
we bought an air chisel to hammer it all off. Removing all this loose rust is extremely fun. Um, the air chisel is extremely fast and it's so much fun to use. Underneath all the rust the steel looked surprisingly good. And from the thickness measurements we also knew that the hull was thick enough. 7.8 7.6 7.7 Good enough. Good enough. So what's coming up next? After the lads from the shipyard repaired everything. Happy? Yes. And we got a new layer of paint on. It was finally time to launch Flying Coney. Since there was so much welding to do, it was planned to have Flying Coney sit in the water for some hours and check for leaks. After we found one, we hauled out again, fixed it and got the chance to launch her a second time the very next day. Hückmann happy hour. After three months on the hard and an uneventful trip together with one of our patrons, we were finally back at our harbor. After all the work we put into cutting the interior, you might think the complete hull is empty. During the last shipyard time we mostly ripped out things that were directly on the hull in order that the lead from the yard could weld all the pittings on the hull. So one of the last remaining steps now before we can go in the next shipyard is to rip out all the rest of the interior that's left like a little bit of the cabin sole here, um, a little bit to the galley over there and of course uh, the ceiling. That will be fun to take off, dusty again. So let's do it. So we started by removing the remains of the galley. Continued by taking the pantry apart. And had a lot of fun taking down the ceiling. While ripping out the last bit of the ceiling, we found something very, very interesting, which is this, this round bit here, this repair here, and it's from the former mainmast. And here is the cutout on the deck for the wooden octagonal mast. Before Flying Coney was converted into her current motor sailor configuration, she was a two-masted sailing schooner. And our idea is to transform her once again into one. After we removed all the interior and the ceiling, we had some help from Anton and his son Saver. They were the first volunteers aboard Flying Coney and helped us to bring all the wood we ripped out up on deck. Then we took out the last bit of cork insulation at the engine room bulkhead and after cleaning everything up, we finally removed the cabin sole.
So after all this hard work, we now have a blank canvas to build our dream boat. Since there is no more interior left we could rip out, we reached the end of this video. For us it was a big step. All the trash is gone and it is unbelievable to stand in this huge compartment. Seeing this empty room showed us once more the true size of Flying Coney and we realized how much work is still ahead of us. But the vision and the imagination of the sailing ship Flying Coney keeps us going. And we can't wait to sail the ocean together with you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.